G'day, Trazik here, and welcome to the next turn, Mansion of Madness. Here we go, we're getting towards the end of the game. Gotta open this thing, ring the bell, and get out of town. Now, I feel it's pretty obvious that this is where the boat's gonna come. Absolutely certain of that. There was a small chance it might appear at this dock, but I don't think so. This is a suspicious looking gap. I'm also convinced that if we ring the bell, I mentioned this about 10 turns ago or whatever, well not 10, but you know, a bunch of turns ago, I'm convinced that if I ring the bell, it's gonna signal some kind of end game and all the monsters are gonna to run towards the boat. Now we're ready to ring that bell at any time, but for now, we're kind of more focused on getting in position. We wanna ring that bell at the end. We need to open this. And I think after we open that, we can basically start heading home. So I am daring to believe that we can actually make it through this game. Basically, I spent the whole first, like the last three or four turns just thinking it was game over, but we persevered and, you know, as long as we don't get some horrific, you know, mythos events that just completely kill all our characters, and we are not actually that good on the characters. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, obviously, is Rita is gonna open this thing. Now, we actually know the code for this. So let's use our first action to open this briefcase. It uses her vision, so she has three attempts, but we're only gonna need one because we actually solved this last turn, but I screwed up. Basically, last turn, my very last guess last turn was 2443 but we know for a fact that it was actually 3442 because when I did that guess, I forgot to remember that we'd actually used the three in the same position in the guess below. And we know that that wasn't the right spot. So it pretty much means, I mean, there's a couple of other combinations, but I'm almost 100% certain that these are the two fours are the two correct. So, because of we've done the four in this position and we did the four in this position. So this is the only one where the four has been in every single one, right? And it, there's been a correct answer every single time. So we know that four is correct. We know that four is wrong and we know this four is wrong, which means it has to be in the middle. And we knew that three was wrong. So it was just a terrible guess and that's delayed us a whole action by making that mistake, which is critical. So we go three, four, four, two, and this will open. Bam. Sweet. Okay, puzzle completed. What you got for us? The briefcase pops open. Inside are the case files of a federal agent who was investigating the Marsh family as well as his firearm. Gain the 45 automatic common pistol, yes. The photographic evidence unique item and one clue. Okay, so that's the photographic evidence and a clue. And of course, get uh, automatic, which is four damage, yes. Now she's basically our speeder. She's got a lot of movement that she can do. She can move three moves. Now there is a fire here, which is kind of annoying, but she's just gonna run straight through it and just take an extra damage because you take one face down fire for moving through a fire zone she's just going to run through there so she's going to go now she could go out of the building but then she'll have to face horror checks we want to try and get them into the building so they don't face horror checks because this guy's going to move one two to this spot here which means one two three anyone this tile or lower is going to have to do a horror check. So we want to get people away or keep them inside the building so they don't do horror checks. So she's going to go one, two, three. Okay, so for running through that fire, she gets one damage face down, which uh, she's got quite a lot of damage to absorb that. Yonk. And that's the end of her turn. Okay, for the next turn, we're gonna have 
Simmons go 1-2 for one action, but on the way he's going to activate this for his second action. Blink. Right, so let's activate this. The weather wrapped door leads to the dark and apparently disused building. Explore. You try the door handle but find it locked, but you think you hear something move on the other side. You put your ear to the door and hear someone breathing heavily inside. Who is in there? After a short silence, you hear a voice. Go away, I do not want any trouble. Are you Agent Craven? After another moment of silence, the door opens a crack and a man with sunken, fearful eyes stares out at you. You're not from Innsmouth. The man's eyes light up with sudden hope. Listen closely. Discard this explorer token and place a person token as indicated. This is Agent Craven. My name is Craven. I am an agent with the FBI. My partner and I were sent to Innsmouth, but he was taken by the locals. The agent's hope seems to fade as you tell him his partner's been killed. I called for an extraction, but with the locals so riled up, I don't know how to contact the boat. My gun is in my hotel room, but my partner had the key when he went missing. Well, we've already got that. Boom. You tell him that you've already contacted the boat, and he seems surprised. Then we should not waste any more time. He slinks out of the storage room and slips through the door to the other side of the alley. Move the agent Craven as indicated. You notice the agent did not close the door to the storage room. You wonder if anything inside could be of use. Place a search token as indicated. Bam. So place agent Craven here. And we place another search token here. The father's going to get in position to ring that bell. Now it takes one, two, takes one turn to ring the bell. So what I think he's going to do is he is going to use his ability, one, two, to focus uh, none. Uh, yep, focus the none. And then he's going to use the second ability to pick up this piece of evidence that's been sitting there for a while. So we've now reclaimed all the evidence. So it's now doing uh, the butler's turn because he has the old journal. And you can see it here. We'll click it. You have tracked all the evidence you have managed to gather on the Marsh family. You can compile the evidence you have found to see how close you are to proving your suspicions. If you find enough evidence, you might even be able to solve the mystery here and now. Okay, compile evidence. Click. It didn't actually use an action, by the way, which is pretty awesome. So we don't, this actually isn't an action. This is just something we can do to see our progress. I didn't know that. I wish I was doing this more often. You are convinced that the Marsh family is guilty of some monstrous crime, but you cannot quite prove it. You only need one or two more pieces of evidence. Oh, there's more evidence still to find. It's got to be this question mark here or this question mark here. Okay, so we are now going to... Okay, so that's one, two, one, two. So he's in range of a horror check at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the pr the priestess is going to cast a spell on Carson and she's going to cast Instill Bravery. You or another investigator within range discard one horror, then flip this card. We're going to discard a horror from Carson and get rid of his uh, claustrophobia. Then we just need to flip this card and do whatever it says. You glimpse a white ship on the Sea of Stars. Law 3 test. If you pass, a strange sense of peace settles upon you. Discard one horror. Yes. If you fail, the vision vanishes as quickly as it appeared. Flip one horror. So that is a law test. We need three successes. And we, <laughs> we only have four dice. Okay, come on. Yeah, I am one, two successes. Uh, what do we need? Three successes. She has not gone insane yet, so I'm not going to spend her token. So basically, that is a fail because we needed, yeah, we needed three successes on law. 
So we have to flip up one face horror. One, two, three, four, five horror, in fact. What is it? Minus shock again, excellent. Okay, so this is minus shock. She must have about two of these in this deck. So, yeah, nothing happens. No additional effect, flip this card face down, bam. And for her next move, she's gonna go one, two, and start heading back to the dock. Then Carlson is gonna go one, two, into this zone, which he can go into now because he's not claustrophobic. And while he's in this space, he's gonna cast his other ability on Simmons, which gives him an extra move. So he's gone one, two, and here it's one, two, three to Simmons, which gives him the extra action, and he's gonna go one, two to here. Okay, and that is the end of that turn. Oh wait, one more thing. Uh, we have to discard this bravery and randomly take another. Okay, so we'll take this one. And here's the one we just had. Put that there. Let's go to the Mythos. Booyah. Fire spreads out of control. We're just gonna place fire here. This was a terrible place to put fire. I should not have done that. You hear the splash and out of the darkness, a gull dripping black fluid flies furiously at your face. This missile event affects the investigator in a beach dock or pier with the highest strength. Fortunately, we have three people on a dock. So we have Simmons, oh no, no, we've only got two people because Carlson moved in here. We've got Simmons and we have our priestess. And we have the father, actually. He is on the rental dock. So yeah, we do have three. So the highest strength, we have three strength for the father, we have three strength for Sister Mary, and we have three strength for Simmons, so they're all the same. Okay, so he's actually insane, and he's only got four more damage until he's killed, so we don't want to do, I mean, a gross black bleeding seagull flying in your face sounds like a horror to me. She hasn't been insane, she's got three left, and Simmons hasn't gone insane, and he's got two left before he goes insane. So I think our best bet is the sister. Bam. Foul wings, claws, and beak leave no wounds, but the noise and stench is unbearable. Suffer three horror, plus one mind negates, then flip all your horror face up. Excellent. Flip all your horror face up, wow. Okay, so her mind is actually five. So that was a really good decision on our part. And she is focused. So we need, we need three. Even if we win this roll, we still have to flip all the horror. This is really bad. But we do have three, uh, we need three successes to pass. Oh wow. Thing is, she's only got three horror left and she goes insane. So if we fail this, she'll go insane and all her horror will be discarded. She'll get three face up horror and then it will be discarded, but she'll still be discarded and all this stuff won't be flipped. Hmm. All right, we'll see how it goes. Wow, what a full on event. Okay. Yeah, bam. She gets three successes, so she gets no extra horror. That's excellent. And now she has this horrific event, flip all face up horror. So we'll start with this one, bam. Okay, that's the minus shock we got last time. So that's no additional effects. Flip it back face down. Paranoia. Every noise makes you startle and jump. Even your companions unnerve you. Keep face up. Whenever you end your turn with the range of another investigator, flip one horror face up. Wow. That's pretty bad. Boom. That's another minor shock that does nothing. Hysteria. You scream and scream and scream. You slap yourself as hard as you can, hoping to break the cycle. Resolve immediately. Flip one damage face up and flip this card face down. Booyah. We'll do the damage in a sec. We'll just have a look at the final card. Absolute Terror. 
The only thing louder than the pounding of your heart is a desperate, ragged breathing. Resolve immediately. Suffer one additional face down horror and flip this card. Okay, so not too bad. We only got one permanent uh, horror effect, which is a very bad effect, but it is still. Okay, so now she gets one more face down horror. And we also have to flip up one damage, wasn't it? Yeah. Now if this is like a broken arm or something, we are absolutely screwed. Light-headed. The sight of your own blood makes your stomach turn over. Your breath becomes ragged for a moment. Resolve immediately. Flip one horror face up, then flip this card face down. Okay. So, this is like a never-ending loop. What if we get that same flipper damage card. We know there's two minor shocks in here, so if we're lucky, we'll uh, get that again. Yonk! Minor shock, excellent. Nothing happens, flip it face down. Okay. And we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six horror, which means we have a total of two left. Well, that could have been a lot worse. Click. The mob moves two spaces towards street two. Okay, so he starts in a space with fire and goes one, two into spaces with fire. So he gets two damage. Uh, three damage, big pardon. And I want to say he had one extra damage that I forgot to give him last turn, but I can't remember. He has 96 to kill, so I don't think it's gonna matter, but I'm gonna give him one. Okay, continue. There is no investigators within range. That's lucky. Nothing in range. Kabam. The maniac moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator, then attacks the investigator in the speed in the space. Now he has four damage written on him, but he's actually only got two. That was from a mistake last turn. So he is here and he goes. One, two, and he gets three damage for the fire. No, the monster does not attack. Bam. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range. Okay, so due to the way we gave him an extra turn, one, two, three, there's no one in range. So no horror checks for anybody. Okay. No horror checks. In the mythos phase, yabam. Also, as I know people are gonna ask, let's just quickly show you the fire rule because it is a little bit unintuitive. Basically, whenever an investigator moves into a space containing fire, they suffer one face down damage, but Whenever a monster starts its activation in a space containing fire or moves into a space containing fire, they suffer damage. So monsters suffer extra damage from fire that investigators don't. It's a bit of a confusing point because, you know, they're different effects, different outcomes for the same effect. Okay, well, that's the end of this turn. I think we did really well this turn. We, uh... We found this briefcase, so let's get rid of that. But we're, we're really poised in a good position. Basically, we're gonna get the final two pieces of evidence are able to be got next round. Then we have quite a heavy trek home for the doctor. We've already got these two basically in position. Takes the father one, two, three. So it's three movement points to get to the bell. So it's one whole turn to get to the bell and then another whole turn to get to here. So he's at least two turns away. So he should probably head to the bell next turn. Alternatively, we have Rita. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, so she could do it and she'd be able to get to safety quicker, but she would also have to, that would pull on the game one extra turn and I wanna I want to ring the bell. Oh, no! God, puss! Oh, you naughty, naughty cat. Wow, that could have been a lot worse. She never usually does anything like that. 
She's very rare that she jumps up. It's because I had the television set up for when I, before I found out about the PC game and she usually sleeps on here and she can't and it really annoys her. Anyway, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna send the father in to ring the bell next turn. Rita's gonna come up here and sort of park here because she'll be able to get to the boat from there and just, you know, be able to shoot people as, as you know, in case tons of monsters spawn which I think they will. Also, due to our fire placement, next round when the fire spreads, we place it there or there. We'll, we'll place it somewhere because basically when this guy moves, he's gonna kill himself by walking through the fire. So we don't have to worry about this guy at all. We just gotta worry about this dude. Okay, I have, it was looking so grim a few turns ago, but I really think I have a strong feeling I could actually pull this out, but we're only one particularly bad Mythos event from losing the game because it could kill a number of our guys. And the one that we're worried the most about is this dude, because this is the only dude poised to talk to him, which we'll need to do after the bell rings. There's one thing I take away from this game is that these things are worth their weight in gold. Don't spend them. It's better to take the damage because you have two opportunities to fill your insanity meter and your damage meter and look we haven't even, no one's lost any damage I mean we haven't had a lot of monsters in this particular quest but uh, maybe you get more damage than other quests but I reckon the only thing that's going to kill us if we die the, the big problem is failing scary mythos rolls so you want to have tons of these clue tokens ready for that final turn well, final few turns, you know, like, so you can pass the Mythos check safely. Okay, well, that's it. I will see you guys next time.